So back in the middle of July, I brought you guys a video where we went through the bookies league two predictions for the 23-24 campaign. And in today's video, we're going to be having a look at the updated table and predictions. Obviously, it's been a number of months. A lot of games have passed by since their original predictions back. And I think it was with the 13th of July, somewhere around the middle of July. A lot has changed. There's a lot of crazy predictions from the bookies. If you do want to enjoy, please make sure to drop a like on their form. If you could try and hit 100 likes on today's video, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you're new as well. We're now on the road to 9,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so, and it does massively help out. Get your thoughts in as well down in the comment section down below. Are you surprised as to where the bookies had your team at the start of the season compared to now? What is the craziest prediction from the bookies and all that sort of stuff? Let's waste no further time and get straight into it. Now, through the power of editing, the lovely graphic is on screen next to me, and to explain it in a little a bit more detail the position is the current prediction for the bookies of where they'll think they'll finish at the end of the season the team pretty self-explanatory the prediction is where they had them at the start of the season and the difference is how much better or worse they're doing compared to what they were predicted to do at the start of the campaign so if we start out then with 24th place they currently have Sutton United at the start of the season though they had them in at 17th so they're going to apparently finish seven places off worse than where the bookies predicted them at the start of the season pretty self-explanatory this one I think Sutton are pretty much a given to be going down into the National League they seem to lack a lot of quality and at the start of the season I was really impressed by some of their signs I think I had them quite high up in my table I'm pr pretty sure I put out a tweet near the start of the campaign saying you know they're an outside chance of the playoffs I don't really know why it's gone so badly wrong for them this season they have got some good players in their team but when they came to Valley Parade a few weeks ago they had a couple of half chances but they weren't really working for each other you know a lot of them seem to have given up already I do think they will be relegated the bookies at the start of the season probably had them to be down and around it but not quite as poorly as they have been doing this season they've had a managerial change as well Matt Grade being there for a number of years he got the chop then Steve Morrison came in he hasn't exactly changed things all too much but Sutton United they currently have them to finish 24th they had them 17th at the start of the season so they're currently seven places wrong on that one in at 23rd place then they currently have Forest Green Rovers as the other team to be relegated so they don't see a change in comparison to the current league table but at the start of the season they had Forest Green to finish in 12th so they are currently 11 places worse off than where they were predicted to finish in the middle of July compared to now and I feel like everybody didn't expect Forest Green to be going back up into League One at the first time of asking they had a number of players who had been turned over there are a couple of managerial changes as well even this season they've had what three or four different managers as well and I'm really surprised to see how poorly they have been doing this season but when again Bradford played them I think around November sort of period we beat them 3-0 on a Tuesday night and they looked absolutely terrible you know we were okay on the day we weren't particularly great and we beat them comfortably and I feel like that's been the problem for them for the majority of this season since Steve Cottrell's come in they've certainly had an upturn in form they've beaten some decent sides as well and I do think Forest Green do have an opportunity here to potentially stay up as of right now the bookies have currently got them going down along with Sutton but at the start of the season their prediction for Forest Green is absolutely way off in at 22nd then they currently have Colchester United avoiding the drop at the start of the season they had them in 19th so again in and around a very similar sort of area. Colchester are always a very weird team. They never really spend any money in the summer. Then they always seem to be in some sort of relegation battle in January. They try to sign uh, every single season it seems. Try to sign a lot of very, very good players and then they just about stay up. They've appointed Danny and Nicky Cowley which I do think is a decent appointment on paper. I do think Colchester will stay up if I'm being honest with you. There hasn't been really too much change though from the bookies compared to the middle of July compared to now and yeah, I don't think that's too bad of a prediction to be honest. In 21st place, they currently have a Grimsby Town at the start of the season they had them in at 13th which is again eight places different to where they were originally predicted from the bookies and I feel like Grimsby again on paper got a decent side obviously Paul Hurst didn't really work out for him there since David Artel's come in their form hasn't exactly changed if I'm being honest with you their fans don't really seem to get along too well with him and I feel like you know Grimsby have got some good players you know Danny Rose is a goal scorer at this level Aboisa showed at the start of the season he's got a lot of quality in there and they do have some good players but for for some reason they're just really struggling I feel like Grimsby have an outside chance of relegation I feel like if Forest Green are to stay up it will be at Grimsby's expense at this moment in time obviously at the start of the season predicted to finish around mid-table now I think they're well and truly in a relegation battle and the bookies were way off in comparison to their prediction at the start of the campaign in 20th place they currently have at Swindon Town at the start of the season though they had them in mid-table in 11th so a nine position change for them I feel like Swindon 
been so far down in the table, he's criminal, you know, the one of the bigger clubs in the league, and I know being a big club doesn't give you the divine right to be in and around promotion, but they should be absolutely nowhere near relegation, the problems they've had off the field are clearly translating on the pitch, obviously losing Dan Kemp and Jay Young in January were two massive losses for them, I don't think they're in any real trouble of relegation, they have got some semi-decent players in their side, obviously Harry McCurdy returned on loan in January from Hibernian, and I think if they can get the best out of McCurdy again, he could certainly fire them up the table, I don't think they've really got any chance of making the playoffs this season but it's crazy to see Swindon predicted to finish 20th according to the bookies when they were around mid-table at the start of the campaign. In 19th position then they currently have at Doncaster Rovers at the start of the season they predicted them just to miss out on the playoffs in 9th so again a 10 place difference for them. Doncaster very similar to Swindon on paper got some decent players Doncaster on paper have got a very good manager as well you know Grant McCanny did incredible things with Hull in the division above a couple of years ago and since he's returned to Doncaster it hasn't quite worked out there were some real worries of relegation a couple of weeks ago I think they've five games unbeaten now I don't think it's five wins in a row I'm pretty sure it's five games unbeaten which is obviously a decent return since the January transfer window they've certainly been a lot better and I do think they will probably finish around 14th 15th something like that I don't think they'll finish as low down as 19th but I certainly don't think they'll finish as high up in 9th and I wouldn't say I ever really felt like they were going to finish that high if I'm being honest with you before we get into 18th position then please make sure to drop a like on there for me and subscribe to the channel as well if you are new get your thoughts in down in the comment section down below in 18th position then then they currently have at Tramia Rovers again very similar to the clubs like Doncaster and Swindon some of the bigger clubs at this level are predicted to be near the bottom end of the table at the start of the season Tramia were predicted to finish in 10th so again not too far away from the playoffs but there has been an eight position change in at their prediction according to the bookies and I feel like at the start of the season having Ian Dawes as the manager just set them up to fail he was never ever going to be the one then they've faffed around with Nigel Adkins being the interim for a little bit and the caretaker but now that they've well since anyway they've made him the permanent manager on a long-term contract there's a clear vision identity and plan now at Tramia Rovers and while some games haven't particularly been great you know they've had some really good results recently like a 4-0 win at home to Stockport obviously a player like Rob Apter is a very key player for them at this level on loan from Blackpool I do believe and Tramia I don't think they'll finish as high up as 10th but I, again I don't think they'll finish as low down as 18th maybe somewhere around Again, similar to Doncaster, 14th, 15th, 16th, potentially somewhere like that. In 17th position, the Bucky's currently have at Salford City. At the start of the campaign, they were predicted to finish in the playoffs in 7th. So again, 10 places in terms of a position change for Salford. At the start of the campaign, under Neil Wood, you know, look at the squad they had on paper... I would have certainly backed Salford for the playoffs, so I certainly wouldn't have backed against it, that's for sure. But since the season started, they started out really poorly. I know they had a couple of injury problems, but the squad that Salford have got, they should be challenging for the playoffs. Since... Carl Mor uh, Morrison, Carl Robinson, sorry, it has come in. I th certainly think they've had a much better upturn in form. Obviously, they've recently got pumped a little bit by, by Mansfield, but I don't think there's any real shame in that, if I'm being honest with you. They've got some good players at this level. They're now playing a little bit more direct as well, going forward quicker into Matt Smith, which I certainly think will benefit them. I certainly don't think they'll finish in the playoffs this season, but I could see them finishing around mid-table. In 16th, they've currently got Accrington Stanley, and at the start of the season, they had them in 14th, so only a two-position change for them. They expected them to finish around mid-table now they've got them in the lower part of mid-table potentially there's not really been much change at Accrington they didn't really do much business in January so they're kind of as you were as expected not a lot really to say about Accrington apart from they're probably going to finish mid-table in 15th position they currently have at Newport County and at the start of the season they had them in 16th so again very similar to Accrington not really much change going on there I think there's much more of a long-term project there that they're building at Newport County with Graham Coughlin at the helm they do have some decent players in their side you know, Will Evans has proven that he can score goals at this level. Had a much better start of the campaign than he has done recently. But I certainly don't think Newport have any real chance of making it into the playoffs, if I'm being honest with you. But again, nowhere near in any trouble for a relegation battle. So it's probably going to be another mid-table finish for the Welsh outfit. Climbing up the table then, in at 14th position, they currently have Harrogate Town. At the start of the season, the Bookies had them to be relegated in 23rd. They're currently doing at nine places better than that, according to the Bookies. Certainly, that's where they think 
think they're going to finish now compared to where they were in the middle of July. And I feel like you can't ever really back against Harrogate. You know, every season it looks like Harrogate, that's probably going to be the one for them. You know, they've lost some key players in the summer, lost Alex Patterson. It looked like they were going to lose Luke Armstrong. He didn't really play too much though in the first part of the season. But you've got to credit Simon Weaver to be fair. You know, he's got, for the large part, the best out of the players. Yes, they got battered 9-2 against Mansfield. And there is a little bit of shame in conceding nine, but Mansfield are a very, very good side at this level. And I feel like Harrogate do have an outside chance of the playoffs, if I'm being honest with you. They are a decent side. Whether they can stay consistent, I'm not really too sure. Whether they can keep their key players fit, again, we'll have to wait and see. But they're certainly a dark horse at this level. And I think next season, a lot of teams, a lot of maybe pundits and stuff like that will probably predict Harrogate to finish around mid-table playoff sort of area because they just never ever seem to get relegated and don't ever really seem to be any in, in any real threat of that if we're honest as well. In 13th position they currently have Morecambe FC at the start of the campaign they had them in 20th for just avoiding the drop now they think they're going to finish in mid-table seven places better off now than where they were predicted to finish at the start of the campaign I think you've got to credit Derek, Derek Adams at the start of the campaign it did look quite bleak for Morecambe we were looking at potential back-to-back -back relegations but the first half of the campaign when Adams was in charge they did pretty well obviously in January they've lost a number of key players like Eli King Michael Mellon there were a couple others as well Tom Bloxham I think from Shrewsbury and I do think recently the results haven't quite been there they have been a little bit inconsistent at times as well I think when you're drawing at home to teams like Grimsby with all due respect you know Grimsby are probably a bigger club than Morecambe but in terms of on the pitch this season Grimsby have massively underperformed and Morecambe probably thought they had an outside chance of the playoffs I don't quite think that will happen I think they'll probably end up finishing around 16th 17th somewhere like that but the book is since the start of the season have had quite the upturn in hope really for Morecambe about how their season is going to pan out they have them in 13th currently into the top half then at 12th position they currently have at Crawley Town at the start of the campaign though they back them to finish bottom of the table so they're currently going to finish 12 places at better off I feel like with a lot of Crawley's off the field issues you look at their recruitment I think I actually back them to finish bottom of the table or somewhere around that sort of position in the table since the season has started though, Crawley have proven a lot of people wrong. I remember when they came to the Valley Parade in around the January sort of time and you know, they put four passes and they comfortably deserve to beat as they were very, very good on that day. You know, they like to play out from the back. They've got a good style of play and you know, a lot of it is kind of counter-attacking and looking to use that pace in behind. But they've got some very, very good players at this level. Again, maybe have an outside chance of the playoffs if they can really stay consistent. I think feel like they need to focus more on their away form. I think their home form, they are pretty strong with. They've got a good win, I think, away at Accrington the other day as well. I do feel like Crawley have an outside chance of the playoffs and you look at where a lot of people were backing them to finish at the start of the campaign. I feel like a top half finish would be an incredible finish for Crawley and you've got to give Scott Lindsay a lot of credit for that because a lot of people maybe doubted him as a manager from his time at Swindon and all that sort of stuff but he's proven a lot of people wrong and Crawley are having a very good campaign so far. In at 11th position then, they currently have Walsall FC. They had the Saddlers in 15th at the start of the campaign. Yes, it's only four places different but I feel like the difference between finishing 15th and 11th is quite significant. I know there's no real benefit to finishing 11th compared to 15th. You might get an extra couple of grand in prize money, but you're not really achieving anything by them positions. But 11th certainly looks much better than 15th. And I feel like at the start of the season, there are a lot of people who weren't really too sure with Matt Sadler, their gaffer. And I feel like recently he's starting to prove a lot of people wrong. Walsall have started to get a little bit more consistent. Again, got a decent chance of making it into the playoffs this season. And I don't think an 11th place finish would be too bad for Walsall. Again, it's clearly a long-term project there. And I feel like next season could certainly be the one where the Sadlers finally break into that top seven and maybe even get back into League One as well. Before we get into the top 10, please make sure to drop a like on there for me and subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already. Get your thoughts in it down in the comment section down below. In 10th position then, they currently have Gillingham FC. At the start of the campaign, they had them in 4th though, so 6 places worse off is where the bookies currently have the Jills to finish. I feel like you look at their recruitment in the summer, the amount of money they were spending, a lot of people thought they'd probably make it into the top 3, if not higher. You know, There were some people backing them to win the league. I never really felt like that though with the Jills and I feel like they were going to struggle to score goals they did at the start of the campaign Neil Harris got the sack which looking back was an absolutely ridiculous decision considering how well he did at Cambridge and now he's moved on to Millwall as well and recently won his first game there and I feel like Gillingham 
whilst their recruitment on paper has been pretty solid. I remember when my team Bradford went to Gillingham a couple months ago now, back in December, and we beat them comfortably, and the game only finished 2-0, and they didn't really offer much threat, if I'm being honest with you, and I feel like they need a couple of goal scorers in their side. They lost Tom Nichols as well in January, which was a really, really bizarre move. Yes, they brought in, I think, Josh Andrews, or Andrew from Birmingham, I believe, on a permanent deal. He spent the first half of the season with Accrington, and I think he could be a decent sign, and you think that they could have Andrew, Andrew, Andrews, I'm not really too sure. Him and Hawkins up front, that is a, a very, very physical front two at this level. I don't think Gilligan will break into the top seven this season, and I don't think Johnny Williams is going to have a successful campaign either. They've currently got the Jills in 10th. In ninth position then, they currently have AFC Wimbledon, but at the start of the campaign, they had them in 21st, so 12 places better off is where they're currently predicted to finish. Me personally, I actually don't think Wimbledon will finish in the top half. I feel like losing Al Hamadi in January is a significant blow for them, and Johnny Jackson, I'm not overly convinced on him as a manager. I feel like if they kept Al Hamadi maybe on loan for the remainder of the campaign, they could have broke into that top seven, but it is such a significant loss. Yes, they got a lot of money in for him and they brought in, was it Josh Kelly from Sully Hill Moors? That's a big boots to fill and I don't feel like he'll be able to do that, but I don't really feel like many players would be able to do that unless you're going out and spending pretty much all that money once again on Al Hamadi. I feel like for me personally, they will finish in the bottom half. Ninth is a little bit too high for me, but it's obviously a lot better than 21st, which is where they were predicted to finish at the start of the campaign. In our eighth position then and the final team missing out on a playoff spot they currently have my team at Bradford City at the start of the season they had us in sixth so two places are worse off. I feel like when you factor in that we didn't win a football match in the league for was it nine matches or something like that around the January sort of period. The fact that we're still well within a chance of finishing in the playoffs this season is absolutely baffling to be honest with you. It shows how poor this league really is and you just need to be a little bit consistent. You know, we've got the quality on our side. Yes, we've got a number of injuries at this moment in time, but I think feel like Alexander has I wouldn't say he's got the feel-good factor back at Valley Parade because I feel like that only really comes back when we get promoted and I feel like our off-the-field issues, you know, with our CEO and owner, they are they were translating onto the pitch and I feel like that causes a lot of unrest with the fans and it's you know more than understandable to be honest with you because there is quite a lot of problems off the pitch and a lot of people will from the outside point of view will you know look to blame the fan base and you know say that they always mourn and want change with the managers but Mike Hughes I don't think was going to be the man to get us promoted this season yes on paper it was the first time we lost back-to-back games in was it about eight nine months something like that but his style of play just wasn't ever going to be popular at Valley Parade because it wasn't progressive enough it was just keeping the ball and passing it for the sake of it there was no real purpose with it since Alexander has come in the football for the large part has been much more direct to say the least there has been some games where it's just been hoofball and it's been horrible to watch but there has been some other games where we have created a decent amount of chances and we haven't been too bad our form recently also hasn't been too bad we should have beat league one side Wickham comfortably on Wednesday night in the AFL trophy semi-final and you know we've got some confidence to take from that game going into Saturday's clash against Notts County and I'm feeling confident for the remainder of the season which if you said to me you know a month six weeks ago I was genuinely fearing relegation it just shows what three Three or four games and three or four wins can do for a side at this level. But they've currently got Bradford in eighth at the start of the season. They had us in sixth. Fingers crossed we can break into that top seven though. Into the playoff positions then in seventh place they currently have at Notts County. At the start of the season they had them to finish in third and I feel like I had Notts County as well in my top three. I'm pretty sure I backed them to finish second. So they're currently going to finish in the playoffs. They had them at the start of the season to finish in autos. If I'm being honest I think they're finishing mid-table. Since their managerial change I feel like things have only gone downhill at four Notts County. On paper, they've got a very good starting 11, but defensively, they've been poor. Their goalkeeping department is not great whatsoever, and while they're good at scoring goals, they're also very good at conceding them as well, and I feel like in the summer, that is a major area which need to address. Obviously, the fir- a first season back in the EFL, finishing in mid-table is a pretty strong campaign, but you think about the budget and some of the players that they've got. David McGoldrick, while he's you know very good, he's not going to be able to consistently play 46 games every season at the, his age, you know, as each year goes by, he's obviously getting no younger. Stating the obvious there, I know, but they need to, if they want to get into League One with McGoldrick, who is a very key player for them, they need to be doing it sooner rather than later. And I feel like next season will probably be his last season at League Two level. And for me personally, I don't think Notts County will finish in the top seven this season. In sixth, they currently have at Borough AFC. I'm pretty sure that's where they are currently sat in the table. And at the start of the season, they had them in 18th. So 12 places different to where they back them at the start of the campaign. You've got to give Pete Wilde a lot of credit for that. A lot of people 
people are getting maybe a little bit unsure about Barrow this season, thinking they might be in a relegation battle. But Pete Wilde is an exceptional manager at this level, one of the better managers in the division, that's for sure. You look at the team on paper and it's not littered with quality like some of the other squads at this level. And, you know, Pete Wilde is an exceptional job there. I feel like Barrow have an outside chance of the top three. I certainly think they will finish in the playoffs this season. Yes, they're in a form recently. Hasn't been particularly great, but I think they will come good once again. Their home record is outstanding. They don't really concede many goals. Yes, the football at times isn't the prettiest to watch. You know, from my experience of watching Barrow, it's very much sitting 11 men behind the ball and try and score a scrappy goal on the counter or from a set piece and then just defend. But they're good at it. It's effective and it'll work at League 2 and even partially at League 1 level as well if they manage to get there. If they get into League 1, that is an exceptional achievement for the football club. And I certainly do think Barrow will finish in the top seven this season. In fifth position then, they currently have a crew at Alexandra and at the start of the campaign, they had them in 22nd. The biggest difference in today's video, a 17 place position thing change. That is absolutely incredible. They backed them just to avoid relegation at the start of the campaign and now they're only two places away from automatic promotion. Again, you've got to give a lot of credit to their manager. I think his name's Lee Bell. He's done an exceptional job there. They don't have the biggest budget. You know, they bring a lot of players through their academy and they would probably, you would say that they're probably doing it the right way, bringing a lot of younger players through, you know, developing your homegrown players and all that sort of stuff and it's something that clearly works for crew. I personally didn't think they'd even be in the top half this season so to see them flying is a big credit to them as a football club and you know fifth place I think would probably be a little bit disappointing for them considering where they've been for the majority of this season again I think they've got a good opportunity of finishing in that top three and compared to the start of the season where they were back just to avoid relegation that would be an unbelievable achievement for crew. In at fourth position then they currently have MK Dons at the start of the season they had them in eighth so from going from missing out of the playoffs and nearly getting into the automatic spots. I think that is a decent little change for them. Obviously, the change of manager has certainly helped that. Graham Alexander, I don't think, was ever really the right fit for MK Dons. Mike Williamson has come in, and I believe since he's come in, if you count, if the season started when he came in, MK Dons will be top of the league. And despite getting pumped 4 0 by Bradford City on the whole, he has been a very successful appointment so far. They've got some very, very good players in their side. Yes, they've lost Max Dean recently, which is proving to be a big, significant loss for them, but they've got a lot of quality players in their squad. Dan Kemp returned in January as well. And I feel like MK Dons, again, another team that have got a real opportunity here to finish in that top three. And I feel like. Out of MK Dons, Crew and Barrow, if I were to back one of them, I think MK Dons will probably finish in that top three at this moment in time if any of them were to displace the uh, displace, sorry, the final three teams left in today's video. But MK Dons finishing in fourth compared to where they were when Alexander got sacked, I think that would certainly be a very good finish for them. Into the automatic promotion places then. In third place, they currently have Wrexham AFC. At the start of the season, obviously with all the media hype, they back them to win the league and finish in first. But still, getting promoted automatically would be an exception achievement for them. Yes, on paper they've got the best squad in the league. Yes, they've spent a lot of money, but you can't back against it. You know, their home record this season has been outstanding. I feel like Am I right in saying they've only lost twice at home all season, both times actually to Graham Alexander? I feel like Bradford City were the first team to go there in over 50 games uh, at Wrexham's ground and keep a clean sheet and win there. So it shows how strong they have been at home. Their away form at times this season has been a little bit iffy, but I certainly think Wrexham have a real opportunity of finishing in that top three. They've got a lot of experience in that side. They've got a very experienced manager as well. He's won promotions. He's got promotions on his CV. Won one last year as well with the same football club. And I feel like Wrexham have got a real opportunity this season to to go back to back, they're pretty much inevitable. If they don't go up this season, they'll definitely go up next year. And I feel like Wrexham will probably finish in that top three, if I'm being honest. In second place, they currently have at Stockport County. And at the start of the season, they had them in second. They are the only uh, the only team in today's video to have not have changed positions at all from the start of the campaign. And we spoke in the last couple of positions about teams who could maybe get into that top three. I think if anyone is to fall out, it might be Stockport, to be honest with you. And the games that I've seen Bradford City play against them, then it look in entirely convincing in either of them. We should have beat them at their place. Andy Cook missed a penalty and had a real good opportunity in that one at home. It was a very scrappy nil-nil game. I feel like on the whole, they've got a lot of quality in their side. They're one of the bigger clubs at this level. They've got some very, very good players, but recently their form has taken a little bit of a dip. Maybe it's the pressure that's piling on. Obviously, they've been displaced from top of the table now. And I feel like Stockport have certainly got the players and the quality to do that, but they're picking up a few injuries. I think Will Collar, again, has picked up another long-term injury, which is another massive blow for them. Stockport 
Can they make the top three still? I think they can, but they need to be improving their form and start getting consistent again because it could quite easily fall away for them. In at first position then, and winning the league currently, according to the bookmakers, is Mansfield Town. Now, I feel like this might have changed recently with them obviously going to the top of the table. At the start of the season, they had them to finish in fifth, so that is obviously a four-place difference for them. And the difference between finishing in fifth and first is monumental, you know, when you consider it is only four positions, having an opportunity at the playoffs compared to winning the league and I feel like Mansfield deserve it some of the score lines and some of the ways that they've beaten teams so far this season is an absolutely incredible achievement the one year I don't back Mansfield to win the league I'm pretty sure I still back them at four top of three I've been a big fan of Nigel Clough and his side for the last couple of seasons this year though I think it will finally be the one where they do manage to get over the line their home form has been incredible I think only three teams have gone there and kept a clean sheet this season that being Crew, Wrexham and Bradford I do believe and you've got to give a lot of credit to Mansfield Field. I think they will go on and win the league from this position. They are a very, very good side. There's a lot of quality in there. They score goals. They don't really concede many. They've got a lot of talent in their squad. They've not really got many players that you think, yeah, you're more of a backup. They maybe got two or three. A lot of them could easily be starters. You know, look at their subs bench. There's always a lot of quality on there. And last couple of seasons, maybe they've been hampered a little bit by injuries. Don't get me wrong, this season they have had injuries, but you look at the likes of Jordan Bowery doing an outstanding job at right back for the majority of the campaign. And there's a number, a number of other players players as well you've got to give them a lot of credit and I personally would not back against Mansfield winning the league this season so there we have it then there is the current updated bookies at Skybet League 2 table of how they currently think it will finish at the end of the season obviously it's interesting to see some of the differences to where they had a lot of these teams in the middle of July you look at crew a 17th place difference Barrow 12 places AFC Wimbledon 12 places same with Crawley Salford have dropped down 10 places so have Doncaster Forest Green have dropped down 11 places as well. Swindon have dropped down 9 places. There has been a significant amount of change and obviously a lot has changed over the last 6 or 7 months or so. But I'm going to leave it there then for today's video. If you have enjoyed please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could try and hit 100 likes as I said at the start of today's video that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are on the road to 9,000 subscribers so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so and it does massively help out. Get your thoughts in as well down in the comment section down below a surprise as to where the bookies currently have your team and what are your thoughts on the differences as well and all that sort of stuff thank you all very much for watching have a great rest of your day and i'll see you very soon for another one peace